Now tell me a little bit about this is not found, this is not your garden variety. You don't find this in all cancers. Are they, it's in which solid tumors and what frequencies do we really find the enteric fusions in which these drugs can be useful? Um, we don't fully understand the full prevalence of enteric fusions in, in cancer uh, at this point. I think that um, as uh, more and more patients undergo next-gen sequencing, we will have a better sense of what that prevalence is across all solid tumors. I think many, many people who are, uh, again, researchers in this space, believe that, uh, uh, that NTRAC fusions occur probably at a certain percentage um, across most tumors, um, as low as, you know, uh, point, uh, one percent to as maybe even high as, uh, you know, uh, almost pathognomonic. Uh, in which it could be the, one of the main driver right. of most some of these cancers and everything of the rare cancers. What we've seen now is is that the, in rare there are certain subsets of rare tumors, such as mammal, mam, mammal, mammary analog secretory carcinoma or mass tumors. I can never say that. Can you say that again? Mammary, <laughs> mammary analog secretory carcinoma, which is a variant of a salivary uh, type tumor. Uh, that almost, you know, 100% of the time uh, carry this tra tract fusions. Other subsets of very rare tumors, uh, pediatric tumors such as infantile fibrosarcoma, um, other subsets of tumors such as um, secretory breast, mm -hmm. um, but common tumors such as lung, colorectal, um, uh, even um, pancreatic may have a very may have a subset of these patients that who have these enteric fusions. So what you're saying is some of the cancers, which are kind of these rare cancers in a way, they can have a higher uh, percentage, and then there are some cancers which are very common, and then they have a lower percentage of expression of this, but this uh, therapy or these types of therapies or this, uh, you know, this target therapy may work. Tell me a little bit, we've discussed fusion, but tell me what different kind, what's the difference between amplification, fusion, Mutation, you know, sometimes, you know, you hear all these words now with NGS testing, you know, these have become very prevalent outside, uh, right? So people are sometimes, goes, this is over amplified versus this is a fusion. What's kind of the difference when people look at it? It's not all the same. It's not all the same. That's very true. Uh, mutations is just, um, as, as um, I think most, patient, most people are familiar with that, terminology just means an alteration in um, a codon that leads to a specific change in an amino acid, which may lead to... Change in the protein. Uh, so proteins, something happens exactly. in the gene, it's a mutation in right. the gene somewhere. All right, correct. A amplification means an actual increase in the expression of that gene or ultimately the protein. Which is right. like hurting you amplification that correct. we use uh, in, uh, in uh, breast cancer. And fusion is, is different in the sense that you're taking two genes and kind of fusing them together, leading to an alteration of... Uh, I guess both both of those uh, genes and both of those proteins uh, causing uh, uh, an increase uh, either expression or uh, uh, kind of a turning on of that uh, of that uh, construct. Okay. Now you know one of the ones is fusion. We look for fusion in the NGS. Is there? Do you ever do something like immunohistochemistry to see if the tract protein is overexpressed? Does that make sense to do in these uh, patients? So I think uh, um, uh, people. Um, um, we are trying to identify whether or not IHC may be uh, uh, an easier way to identify these patients. Um, there have been some studies to suggest that there may be good sensitivity and specificity. Um, there are issues with um, whether that uh, specificity actually is really reproducible. And so that is still in development at this time. So that's still experimental, experimental right now. But right now, if you wanted to treat with one of the track inhibitors, you would probably do next-gen sequencing looking for fusions in the NTRAC. Correct, correct, correct. Okay. At this point, at, at, at this point um, that is probably the best way to identify these fusion patients. These fusion patients. Um, an, another way would be uh, FISH. Um, the only problem with FISH is because the NTRAC genes, both 1, 2, and 3, can partner with a number of different um, uh, other genes to try to create a FISH assay with multiple different uh, you know, the different uh, like what, whatever the it would just, be, just cost, right. it would be cost prohibitive and it would not be practical in a way. And so um, at this time, uh, the most accurate way to identify these uh, patients is really by uh, uh, next-gen sequencing.